first thing I do is listen. Just listen. You never know what type of call is coming across the line. But every time we open that door, it's a different scene, it's a different story. That's what you do day in and day out that makes a difference. Everything we do has an effect. We're all more connected than we think. So when a mom calls at 3 a.m., I understand. When habit at a time, you start adding small goals. You start with brand new babies, and you get to walk them through their life with them. I kind of see how delicate life is, basically. I say as a mom myself, talk to me. I'm a very good listener. I'm a father and a grandfather. I teach people how to feel better. You've never seen my face, but I'm always there. I love being a pediatrician. I couldn't be anything else. If you don't care about people, you couldn't do this job. If you don't care about people, you couldn't do this job. Sounds real good, doesn't it? Only problem is, Anthem Blue Cross really doesn't mean what they say. Ask Bob Daringer, widow of Esther Daringer. 49-year-old Esther beat breast cancer until it metastasized to her brain. Ohio State University physician Dr. Herbert Newton, her physician, had successfully treated cancer like Esther's through intra-arterial chemotherapy. Her husband's health insurer, Anthem Blue Cross, paid for three of the 12 scheduled treatments. Bob and Esther first learned that the fourth treatment was being denied the day before it was given. The insurance company had approved the first three of the 12 treatments, but then refused further payment, declaring the procedure experimental. Despite the fact that Esther was responding favorably to treatment and that the same treatment had been approved for other patients, her Blue Cross reviewer had never heard of intra-arterial chemotherapy, which had been done for over 20 years. Her MRIs proved the treatment was working. Anthem Blue Cross continued to deny the claim during a protracted appeals process. While the appeal was pending, Esther's health took a drastic turn for the worse, and she died on November 6, 1997, of a metastatic brain tumor. Esther was only 49 years old. The final denial letter arrived the day of her funeral. Esther's treatment would have allowed her to live longer with quality. She wanted to see her youngest graduate from high school and hopefully grandchildren from her other kids. Anthem Blue Cross fought tooth and nail to defend its contract and its decision. Amazingly, Anthem Blue Cross motto was improving the health of our policyholders. Today, the Insider Exclusive presents Anthem Blue Cross, Profits Over People, the Esther Daringer story and how their lawyer, Bob Palmer, at the law firm of Robert Gray Palmer Company, LPA, took on Anthem Blue Cross and got justice for Bob and Esther with a record-breaking verdict of over $51.5 million for breach of contract and bad faith, awarding $2.5 million in compensatory damages and $49 million in punitive damages. After appeals by both parties, the Ohio Supreme Court agreed with the award of punitive damages, stating that a pervasive corporate attitude at Anthem Blue Cross placed profits over people. The court reduced the amount of punitive damages to $30 million, the highest ever approved by that court, and ordered that a significant portion of the award be used to create a memorial cancer research fund at the Ohio State University in Esther's name. Bob Palmer has earned the highest respect from citizens and lawyers alike as one of the best trial lawyers in Columbus, in Ohio, and in America. Bob has built a substantial reputation nationwide by consistently winning cases other law firms have turned down. Bob is listed among Ohio's top lawyers. He was named amongst Ohio's super lawyers each year from 2004 to 2011. Since 1993, he was cited in the best lawyers in America and in the National Bar Register of Preeminent Lawyers in Medical Malpractice and Personal Injury. Best Lawyers named Bob its 2011 Lawyer of the Year for Personal Injury Litigation in Columbus, Ohio. Bob is a fellow in the American College of Trial Lawyers. His amazing courtroom skills and headline-grabbing success rate continue to provide his clients with the results they need and the results they deserve.
Hi, I'm Steve Murphy, and this is the Insider Exclusive, live from Columbus, Ohio, at the law firm of Robert Gray Palmer. It is my great pleasure to introduce Bob Palmer to the show. Welcome to the show, Bob. Thank you, Steve. Today we are going to be, the reason we're here is we have a real life John Grisham Rainmaker story, don't we? We do. It is a story that, a uh, case against Anthem Blue Cross, in which you won a huge punitive damages award. Tell our audience a little bit about the client that you represented, and then we'll get into the case. I represented Bob Dartinger, who was the widow of Esther. Unfortunately, I never met Esther because she died before I got involved. Uh, Esther was a 49-year-old housewife, mother of three, who also worked part-time for an optometrist in a small community just uh, west, east of Columbus here. Esther had breast cancer. She beat it. And unfortunately, five years later or so, it met had metastasized to her brain. She had a couple brain tumors came under the excellent care of Dr. Herbert Newton at Ohio State, who was doing a procedure where he actually shot chemotherapy right into the tumors in Esther's brain through a, a catheter. And it worked. Mm -hmm. And Anthem was the insurance company. Bob was a school teacher. And uh, approved the first three of 12 Yes, the uh, doctor said there had to be 12 treatments. That's correct. And the insurance company at that point in time said fine, right? All started out, and, and if it works, the outcome is quite good. You yeah. can expect a couple, three more years of good quality life, and that's what Esther was looking forward to. Mm -hmm. She had the first three treatments, then what happened? She showed up uh, for her fourth treatment and learned that it had been denied the day before. Uh, since they were all set and ready to go, they went ahead with it uh, and started the appeal process at that point. Uh, Anthem uh, said it was experimental. Anthem, Blue Cross, stopped the treatments. Why? $10,000 a piece, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. um, the key was that if Esther was able to continue with these treatments and they couldn't afford to do it themselves, um, then it was likely these tumors would continue shrinking as they were, as, as the MRIs show, they were virtually gone. Mm -hmm. And once the treatment stopped, they came back and sadly uh, consumed Esther as she died a few months later. Now, you filed the case? Yes. What happened? The case uh, was really monumental because Anthem took the position, we have a contract, we don't deny care, we just pay benefits, we don't think we owe these benefits, see you later. Uh, we ended up taking over 60 depositions in this case, putting together uh, information about how Anthem's system worked. Their system of denial. Their system of denial. Yeah. Because that was the key to the punitive damages award that you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Uh, the case was tried against the system. Yeah. not against the people of Anthem who were simply cogs in the wheel. And what is their system of denial, in 10 words or less? The system in 10 words or less is that they turn people into paper, mm -hmm. they process it, and then they shred the paper. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what they did in, Anthem, in Esther's case. What was your legal strategy and some of the hurdles and challenges you had to overcome? One of the big hurdles was that we knew that uh, this treatment that Dr. Newton was doing had been approved for other patients in other companies as well as Anthem. And so we had a big fight over getting those medical records yeah. of the other patients because Anthem had approved and paid for some of them, but meanwhile was denying Esther on the basis that before, it was experimental. Before you filed the lawsuit, had Dr. Newton, when, they, when he found out, that the fourth treatment and all subsequent treatments were not going to be paid for because they were classified as experimental. Did Dr. Newton provide information to the insurance company to say, hey, you paid for other patients? Absolutely. And what was the insurance company's response? Uh, in this case, we're not. And um, So yesterday it was okay, today it's experimental. Right. We've decided that, that now it's, it's definitely experimental, both as to the drugs you're using and to the route that is the mechanism he was using, which have been around for 20 years. Right. 
Now, what were some of the other challenges? Because you took this all the way to the Ohio Supreme Court, didn't you? Right, we did. <clears throat> After we got a great verdict. Uh, the verdict was? The verdict was uh, $1,350 for breach of contract, yeah. $2.5 million for bad faith. That would be the uh, emotional upset to Esther for going through the process, mm -hmm. uh, and $49 million in punitive damages to uh, punish the company, trying to get them to uh, not do it to anybody else. Yeah. Now, obviously, when they were hit with this $51.5 million verdict, they appealed it. They sure did. What was their basis of appeal? They didn't appeal the <clears throat> bad faith itself. What they appealed was the big verdict of 49 million punitive damages. The 49 million. And the reason they appealed was they said that the jury had awarded the 49 against not only the Ohio Insurance Company, Community Insurance Company, but also its owner, its parent, yeah. Anthem. And they said that uh, Anthem was just a parent. It couldn't possibly be liable for these punitive damages. Yeah. The Court of Appeals agreed with them uh, and we appealed that then to the Ohio Supreme Court, who reversed the Court of Appeals, upheld 30 million of the 49 million, which then was the highest amount they'd ever upheld right. uh, in punitive damages against the parent. And they also did something very unusual. They ordered part of that $30 million to be done how? To be dispersed how? They took $14 million of that and said, we're gonna set that aside and send it to the Ohio State University uh, James Cancer Center to set up the Dardinger, Esther Dardinger Research Fund. That's right. what they kind of made up. It never been done before in Ohio. Hasn't been done since. Yeah. Um, and there was a real constitutional question as to whether the court could have done that. Yes. The irony, if there is an irony, is Bob had already planned to do, in essence, yeah. the same thing. We have with us today Dr. Newton, yes. and we're going to bring him on the show right now so he can tell a little bit about Esther's treatment, uh, the experience that he had with Blue Cross. So let's do that right now. It's my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Herb Newton. Welcome to the show, Doctor. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Tell us a little bit about your former patient, Esther. What kind of person was she? She was a very wonderful person. She was very funny, full of life. Uh, she really enjoyed her uh, husband and family, mm -hmm. and she definitely wanted to uh, fight her disease. She wanted to be aggressive. And let's talk about her disease. She had a metastasized cancer, right? Correct. She had. And she had, you had prescribed 12 treatments, which you have previously uh, utilized with other patients successfully, haven't you? Yes. And you send this to the insurance company, correct? to get it approved, which happened to be Anthem Blue Cross. They approved it, didn't they? Yes. They, they did. paid for the first three uh, uh, treatments. That's right, cycles of treatment. And then was it a surprise to you on the fourth one that they refused paying anymore? Yes, we were shocked and uh, very disturbed because uh, the treatments had been going very smoothly. Yeah. She was responding well. Uh, she didn't have any toxicity or complications. Yeah and her MRI scans were showing improvement. As soon as you found out that it was denied the fourth time, did you call the insurance company or do you leave it to the patient to call? Uh, my nurse and I actually sent in appeals and we sent in background information on the type of treatment we were using, how this had been used for over 20 years in the medical yeah. literature on hundreds of patients, was well documented uh, in her type of cancer and uh, they still you know, did not uh, uh, overturn the denial. Did you have other patients that were insured by Anthem Blue Cross that they had paid for, same kind of treatment? Uh, there had actually been one in the past that they had paid for, yeah. The entire 12 treatments? I'm not sure if it was 12, but it was everything that we had tried to do they yeah. had covered, yes. And you brought that through their attention? Yes, we told them. So they constantly, did they give a reason for denial? They just focused on the fact that they felt that it was too experimental, too investigational. Yeah, did you, did you ask them if it was experimental? Why did you approve the first three times? We did ask them and they and had what no, was their answer? They had no explanation. They, they said it was a mistake. It was a mistake they three times? They shouldn't have approved them in the first place. As a result of this, Esther's situation got worse, didn't it? We were able to do one more cycle, a fourth cycle of treatment, and then after that, she didn't want to proceed any further. She didn't want her family to be stuck with all the medical bills. Wow. She was very worried about her husband and family, you know, having this this debt, 
And so we eventually tried a round of a similar kind of chemo intravenously. Uh, she had a lot of toxicity. It knocked down her bone marrow counts. Uh, she yeah. was in the hospital because of her toxicity from that method, and that was the last treatment that we were able to give her. So as a res direct result, and the court saw it the same way, as a de direct result of the denial of this uh, treatment, she died a lot sooner than she would have, right? Correct. As a result of the final verdict, um, initially 50 million reduced to 30 million punitive damages, but half of that went to set up a, a research center at your Ohio State University, correct? correct. Yeah. Tell us what the center does and what has been the benefit of this infusion of this money. Well, we have, it was $14.4 million that was designated by the courts to go to the James Cancer Hospital uh, in, in Esther's in the name. And so it's uh, an endowed neuro-oncology center. We have dedicated that center to taking care of patients with brain tumors and spinal cord tumors. And so we now have a we have 14 neurosurgeons. Wow. Uh, I share uh, running the center with the chairman of neurosurgery, who is a brain tumor specialist within neurosurgery. So this money has helped a lot of people. It's been a significant increase in the quality of brain tumor care in Central Ohio. I want to thank you very much for being on the program, taking your time to come here. Keep up the good work. Uh, Bob, one of the great things I like about this case is the deposition that you took of the chairman, the CEO, Ben Lytle of Anthem Blue Cross. And in these cases, this is where you have an opportunity to really interview and grill the higher ups to find out what's going on in their mind and how they made the decisions that they did. And we're going to show that right now. What we hope to do is to help people be more productive, uh, help people uh, to uh, live with the disease better. In fact, it may cost more in doing that. Uh, but, uh, but in trying to help people live with a chronic disease uh, and to live a more productive life. We don't deny uh, care to anyone. Do you agree that an Anthem health policy holder has the right to receive all the benefits to which he or she is entitled under his Anthem certificate and schedule of benefits? We should, uh, yes. Do people buy insurance with the expectation and hope that the insurance contract they have bought will pay for the health care their physician recommends to them? Again, I Do you think it would be reasonable or justified for Anthem to approve brain cancer chemotherapy for Esther Dardinger uh, on three occasions to have information that the chemotherapy was having a positive outcome on Esther Dardinger and then deny any further such treatment as experimental? Again, I can't speculate. I don't know the facts. As you can see, um, Ben, the chairman, uh, really didn't really take any responsibility for anything going on in his company, did he? He did the best not to. Yeah. And that's what you find in a lot of depositions, Absolutely. Don't you? you know, they, Absolutely. the guy upstairs, he doesn't know anything. It's almost like, why take the deposition, right? Yeah, Th to prove just that. It's all part of how the system works. Today, we're very fortunate to have Esther's husband on here, Bob. So let's bring him on right now. It is my great privilege and pleasure to introduce Bob to the show. Welcome to the show, Bob. Thank you. Good Thank you here. very much for being here, and our condolences to you and your family. I know it happened a long time ago. It never goes away, does it? No, it doesn't. We've discussed a lot of the case. We've discussed what happened. Um, but from your point of view, when your wife first got the treatment, was getting the treatment, she got three approved treatments, and all of a sudden, Blue Cross decided they don't want to pay anymore because it was experimental. How did you, what did you think? What was your immediate thinking when you heard that? Uh, stunned. Yeah. Um, couldn't quite understand it. We were actually at the hospital for the fourth treatment when we found out that it wasn't going to be approved. Were you dealing directly with the insurance company at that time? Uh, I was dealing with the agent who represented the company to the school system through which I was getting the insurance. And what was the agent telling you? Uh, they were frustrated because mm -hmm. they weren't getting uh, adequate answers from, from the company. I did try, I think in June, to call 
and talk to somebody at the insurance company and that didn't work out very well. Sometimes your wife needed the treatment. Your wife was dying from not having the treatment. Do you, you must have said, do you have family members? You must have said Yeah, I, actually I did, but. And what did you say? Well, I just, I just said, I don't understand why we can go for four months and get the treatments and all of a sudden you're telling us not. Yeah. Uh, doesn't anybody know what anybody else is doing there? Yeah, they never came back and said, well, now we've reclassified it as experimental. Oh, uh, not to me. Yeah. Uh, I got that information through Dr. Newton. So if you could talk to all the CEOs of the insurance companies on national TV as you are right now, what would you say to them? I would say to them, if you're going to make claims that you're you know, doing things for the benefit of your customers, then you really need to follow through on that. In other words, walk your talk. Absolutely, they, and they don't do it. I want to thank you very much for spending time with us today. And again, my condolences to you, and thank you very much. Bob, we came all the way out here from California because this case is so remarkable. And I am so impressed that you were able to get justice for the little guy. This is truly a David and Goliath type of case, isn't it? It was great that way. Yeah, I think uh, had a tremendous client. You've met Bob yeah. and the good support from Dr. Newton and, and enabled us to put a case together that made a lot of sense to the jury. Yeah, not only that, but the case continues to help other people Absolutely. because of the Research Center. And I want to thank you very much for being on the program and sharing your time with us. It was a great job. Thanks for joining us. You can get more information about our guests and the issues at insiderexclusive.com.